I can tell you from my personal experience that you can be in bliss and be in quotes normal and, and, and move through life. And, but you'll just have this ultra quality to everything that you're doing and touch and experience. So that's good news. If I were to follow my bliss in quotes, I'm scared I'll have to quit my job, leave my home or relationship or do something equally drastic. Is that true? Yeah, that's, I'm glad I got that question because that is a concern for so many people. You know, if I'm in bliss, again, I can tell you from my personal experience that you can be in bliss and be in quotes normal and, and, and move through life. And, but you'll just have this ultra quality to everything that you're doing and touch and experience. So that's good news. But I will say if you have been enculturated or you learned that sacrifice and suffering were real and that you needed to perform for the good or bad opinions of other people to avoid the bad opinions and to gain the good opinions of other people, then you most likely are living a life that's not your most blissful life. And so I would say the divine never wants to promote fear. That's one thing the divine will never do is promote fear. So as you connect more deliberately and tangibly to bliss, it will tell you in gentle ways how to arrive. Tell me where to go. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to say and to whom, and I will to do it and nothing more. Really critical to pay attention to the nothing more right now. Because if you're feeling that there might be some transitions that would happen if you actually honor and respect and align with bliss and choose a blissful life. If you think you'd have to make some changes, you want the divine doing it through you, with you, for you, in you, of you. Because the divine has a, a way of doing things that's a win-win. So when you're doing something that's loving and kind and blissfully oriented for yourself, it will be kind and blissful and lovingly oriented for the other, at least eventually, if they're not resisting it. If they resist it, then they, they have to live with their own ego. And that's really hard for some people to hear, but all of us are up to transcending the limitations of our egos this lifetime so that we can actually live and abide in a place of bliss. So I would say this, be kind and gentle with yourself if you if you realize that there might be some shifts and changes you have to make or transformation that's going to take place while you align to bliss. It will do it for you. This is your being. Abide in your being and the doing will take care of itself. You'll get inspirations, you'll say things, but I will tell you this, it's going to require often to maintain a state of bliss, to maintain the connection that begets bliss, you will find that you're going to be radically honest. Truth, truth is truth, truth is bliss. Truth with a capital T. So you're, you're going to have to relate things to some people, maybe a boss, maybe a partner, maybe uh, you, the home you're in was never the home you were meant to be in. And let the divine make the transitions and changes for you, but you will have to be radically honest with yourself and with other people. And that means, let's let redefine radical honesty again, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions are all the same. Your thoughts about your job, your feelings about your job, and your actions about your job are all the same. If that's who you are now, then you are being radically honest. Then you can just surrender the whole situation to the divine and watch the divine give you the greatest promotion in the world. Watch the divine set everything up. I know some of you know this and you've experienced it as you relax and surrender into the divine. It does everything for you. Just stay happy, optimistic, blissful. And that carries you into the wave of grace. There's nothing, I need to do nothing when you are connected to bliss. 
But as you're backing up into Bliss's arms and letting yourself do this free fall, if there are things that are distracting you and keeping you consistently distracted from this free fall into Bliss's arms and making you worried or fierce, fearful or scary and, and, and scared of the whole thing, then you're going to ultimately have to address it. But I will tell you, it's not the ego's way of addressing things. You're going to love it. I don't know what it is, but I love it. So you have a job you thought you hated. Sorry, can't do that anymore to fall into Bliss's arms. I don't know what this is, but I love it. You show up with that blank mind that Rumi was talking about. When I let go of myself, I'm in bliss. Just show up and go to the job because it's your job today. Will it be your job tomorrow? Who knows? Just go and say, I don't know what this is, but I love it. And then love whatever it is. And you'll see how it begins to morph and change for you because bliss will do it. I know that's scary. I know that's scary to hear, but we all deserve to live in bliss. And so do the other people and the situations that you're interacting with. You want to show up your true self. You want to show up your best self. You want to show up your blissful self, your relaxed and surrendered self and enjoy everything that you're experiencing. How can that be a problem for anyone who, who stays in the mix with you? So my best intentions and thoughts for anyone who feels that Adopting this life of bliss is going to cause them to make some radical changes. Just relax. Remember, it's all one big relax. Relax into the divine. The divine will inspire you and tell you exactly where to go, what to do, what to say, and to whom. Just do that with all your will, all your power, all your light, and nothing more. Don't do anything more than the divine tells you.